alaikum lovelies, welcome back to my channel, Tis Amina here and today I am here for you with my February favourites. That is all of my beauty favourites from the month of February. Cue the moment where I tell you that I feel like February flew by, I really do feel like February flew by. March is here, spring is around the corner, I'm planning a birthday for my daughter, she's going to be turning four, where has the time gone? This month, as has been the case for the past couple of months, I had so many any favorite products that I either used time and time again or was incredibly impressed by even if I discovered them near the end of February. I didn't even try to fit them all into this one video, instead I thought that I would allocate a special video, an exclusive one for all of those products that deserve that rave review. Now there is something else that I wanted to try in today's video. The idea is that in these monthly favorites videos at the end I shall be posing a discussion point something that we can talk about quite casually and then you guys would continue the topic or continue the discussion in the comments under this video. So for now let us get started with my beauty favourites for this month. We shall be starting off with a lip gloss. This is the Tanya Burr lip gloss by Eye Candy. It's in the shade Aurora. Although I'm wearing a darker lip colour today, outside of today's video I have been wearing lighter colours. I'm kind of getting into the spring mood even though spring is towards the end of this month technically when we actually change our clocks. This pairs so well with pretty much every lip colour that I wear actually. It's a beautiful light pink colour. The formula of the gloss itself is exceptional. It's very similar to a lot of the high-end lip glosses that I own, not only in its texture, its formula, it's not sticky at all, but also in its opacity and colour payoff. This also lasts so long on the lips and it's just such a flattering colour. I just feel like it looks so nice on my lips that I end up using this on top of any lip colour and also by itself. I highly recommend this. It's affordable, it smells lovely, very sweet. I shall leave links to everything that I'm showing you today in the description box under this video so just expand that. Moving on, an old favourite became renewed this month. This eyeliner is so gentle, if I've got a long day of filming or if I'm going out to an event, this does not irritate my eyes whatsoever. It's so easy to remove at the end of the day. If you make a mistake, it's very easy to correct this eyeliner. It wipes away so easily and you can amend whatever wonky line you've drawn there. Much much easier to correct than some of the more long wearing gel eyeliners so I absolutely love this. I've used it so frequently this month it's actually almost run out although I do have a backup of course. I am one of those people that sort of panics that a product might become discontinued so I keep a backup and I love this little guy so much that I bought a backup. The brush itself is so fine that it's very difficult to mess up at all. It enables me to get right into the inner corner of the eye. If you're somebody who's new to doing a wing eyeliner or to eyeliners in general, I highly, highly recommend this. Lots of thumbs up for this product. Okay, moving on to a highlighter. I think some of you may already have guessed that this would get featured sooner or later in a favorites video. It is the Balm Merry Luminizer. Everything they say about this product is 100% true. It is the holy grail of highlighters. It is so beautiful, it gives a gorgeous golden glow to the skin without being overbearing. If you're somebody who goes for a very natural look with your makeup, applying this in a gentle light-handed manner just to the tops of the cheekbones catches just enough light to enhance that natural makeup look. On the other hand, if you're wearing a more dramatic makeup look, you can build this up without it looking cakey or flaking off. It's so smooth, it has the most beautiful sheen. Almost every time I've applied makeup this month, I have turned to this highlighter and you can tell it's not even wearing away. You get quite a large amount of product as well. That's another plus with this. You get 8.5 grams of the highlighting product and so I feel like although this isn't a drugstore product, the amount of product that you get and the fact that you need only a very small amount to get the desired effect, it's reasonably priced. Now, I have done a video dedicated to the new Urban Decay Spring 2015 range. The lip products have got to be my absolute favourite and of them, the shade Sheer Liar, I have worn 
so often that it is actually starting to wear away. It's definitely somewhere in between a lip balm and a lipstick in terms of its opacity. However, in terms of its texture and its effect on the lips, it's definitely much closer to a lip balm. This product is fantastic somehow in moisturizing the lips. And that's part of the reason why I've been wearing this lip color so frequently throughout this month. I layer it. I layer it on top of almost any and every lip color that I'm wearing on any given day that I'm wearing makeup, because I don't wear it every day. Not only do I find that my lips feel lovely afterwards, but also this color, I don't know what it is about it, but it mutes any other lip color so perfectly. So if I'm wearing a more vibrant lip color that I like the tone of, if it's looking too stark, particularly for daytime wear, then I apply this sheer lip color over the top. And what it does is it tones down that lip color in just the right amount. What I shall do is swatch all of the colors next to Sheer Liar, my favorite shade from this month, just so you get an idea of how this compares to the other shades in the range. The next favorite is a primer. Now, I don't talk very often about primers because I struggle with them. Yes, the struggle is real with Amina and primers. I have tried so many. I mean, literally, since I started wearing makeup, I have tried out so many different primers. It started off with the QVC Laura Geller Spackle, I think it was. I tried Smashbox, I've tried High End, I've tried Hourglass, so many primers. I have tried. Why am I talking like Yoda? There's something that's added to primers that my skin cannot tolerate. It's just like, I'm gonna get this stuff off me or I shall break out and break out it does. So primers I tend to stay clear of generally, except for this primer. It is the only one that I've stuck with throughout the years. It's the one by Bare Minerals. It's called Prime Time. My final favorite for this month is actually a scent. I don't believe I have done scents in my favorites videos in the past. However, I thought that I would change it up a bit and introduce you to not only my February favorite scent, but my favorite scent of all time. It is the D&G light blue fragrance. I have the 50 ml size. I've always had the 50 ml size and I say always because I have repurchased this time and time again. Since I was first gifted it by my hubsy love, it was the first gift that he gave to me almost a decade ago. This is actually the original one that he gave to me. This is the repurchased bottle. I leave a little bit in here just for memory's sake, but this is the repurchased one. The light blue has become a lighter blue apparently since. I'm talking about the perfume you first gave to me. Do you remember what it's called? No. Yes, you do. Do you not remember? Oh, thank God. I was going to feel incredibly hurt right there. It is. D &D. Yes, that's right. Okay. Sorry, my battery ran out and then Hubsy came in to get the hijabs. By the way, do you like the new hijab? This is one of our new basic hijabs from Pal khaki. Daisy. Yes, this one is cool khaki. Well done, Hubs. Uh, we've actually used the original names that we had for the basic hijabs when I first introduced them. For those of you who don't know, the hijab is my original design. I began to sell it on Pal Daisy nearer the start of my YouTubing and it's alhamdulillah since developed. We now have a boutique as well as an online store. The new line is going to be the basic hijabs which I'm wearing right now and I have other lines planned as well for release next month but anyway back to my favorites D&G light blue love 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 it not only for its sentimental value but also there are no other fragrances that come close to being like this one it's so different if you're somebody who is used to just floral fragrances and you want to venture out then you will really appreciate this it actually has a slightly citrusy scent. It's very fresh and I never would have thought that I would go for anything that is citrusy or a bit lemony, a bit zingy. But for some reason, I absolutely love this one. It still has a slightly feminine scented edge to it though. So it's not harsh. It's not like a strong citrusy scent that hits your senses. If you are into perfumes or you know somebody who's into perfumes and you want to get a gift for them, I highly recommend this. And perhaps they will form a sentimental attachment to it like I have done through the years. Okay, those are all of my favorites for this month. And now I'm going to move on to discussion time. That sounds like you're in school. No, we'll call it Ask Amina. If you want to take part in Ask Amina, then all you have to do is leave a comment under this video, suggest something that you 
you would like for me to discuss or ask a question, ask away if you want advice on something. The only thing that I will not be touching upon is religious jurisprudence. So don't expect me to be giving out fatwas or for me to be explaining or justifying what people do under the banner of religion. I shall not be touching on that at all. Rather, I want to talk about things that we can all relate to. I want to be talking about things that are going to empower you and me and it's going to inspire all of us and it's going to help for us to grow in our positive energy. And if it works out, i.e. if I get enough of you taking part in the comments under this video and I get enough thumbs up on the video, then I shall be continuing this as a routine feature in all of my monthly favorites videos from now onwards. Okay, so this month I want to talk about identity. I want to ask you guys the question, how much of your family history do you know and are you satisfied with what you know? Now we all form our identities in different ways and oftentimes it is the things that are immediately around us or the events and people that we encounter on a daily basis or with which we have frequent interactions that shape us as human beings. But for me it goes deeper than that and I have never had the opportunity to know a lot about my family history or my ancestors. It's very different for Hubsi. His family, mashallah, they have a huge family tree drawn up. They actually have records of it. It's in depth. Everybody knows a lot about other family members that had lived, you know, decades and decades ago. For me, it's been very different to that. I've always wanted to know more about my ancestors. I've always felt like I needed to have a grasp of my story. And and its continuity in my family history, where I fit in. And I've always wanted to know more about the figures that have gone before me in my family. My grandfather, my father's father, passed away quite recently. And about two years before he passed away, I sat down with him. I was the first family member ever to actually sit down with him and compile somewhat of a family tree. It's a very skeletal looking family tree. There isn't much on there, but it was actually the first time I got to read the names of my family members who had lived three generations, four generations ago. I think that as time goes along, that old, beautiful, treasured tradition of storytelling, verbal storytelling, somehow dissipated and we're left with very little understanding of who our ancestors were. I've always loved learning about history. My sister May teaches history. She teaches me so much about past events and figures and I've always loved learning about them, not only to understand the world better, it, as it stands right now, but also to understand more about ourselves as human beings. It's just so fascinating to hear other people's stories, to be inspired by them, to learn from them. And in my own family history, from the figure of my mom's father, who was once shot in the village, there was fighting going on in between different groups in his village. And he and a bunch of people from his village were stood in a line and shot one by one. He played dead. In fact, he was hit on the side of his shoulder. When the shooters had gone, he got up and with his one working arm managed to lift his uncle and take him to a nearby hospital. Amazing, amazing figures. Another family member who had memorized Shakespeare by heart. My dad says that me and my sisters took after him because we loved literature so much. To my grandmother up until recently who had come to this country in the 50s as a single woman by herself, earned a living, sent it back to India to support her children who were there. There are so many heroic stories that we can glean from stories of the past and I don't know very many of them. Everything I just said is probably 90% of what I know and I wish I knew more. A friend of mine, Johnny, who also used to make YouTube videos, some of you may know her, recently did a DNA test to find out where she came from, where her ancestors came from. And ever since she did it, I've been telling Hobsey I want to do it too. With my friend Johnny, it turns out that we have a little bit in common with each other. She's part, although very, 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 very tiny part, Indian, so we get to have that connection. I think that's a wonderful thing to know that we are so interconnected that oftentimes on the surface we can be separated by nationality or by race but actually somewhere along the line there is this overlap and it's just the beautiful, miraculous, incredible, extraordinary 
overlap of humanity, that we are all one, that we all have one source. There's a sign in there for us to learn from. And although I don't think there's anything wrong with having sort of a dual culture in that I'm British and I'm Indian too, I think that it helps us so much to learn about the components that make up our current culture. Growing up, I found out so much about the British culture and I really related to it, you know. When we learned about the Victorians, the Tudors and Stuarts, I had a connection with Mary Jane Grey, one of Henry VIII's wives. You know, I really felt connected to that. And when I was about 12 or 13, we went and did a tour of India. We went to all the historical sites. And I think that right now, years later, I would have a better understanding of and a greater appreciation for that. So I really want to visit India at some point, inshallah, whenever it happens. I want to know how many of you know as much as I do, i.e. very little, and whether you have ever had the inclination to find out more or a desire or yearning to find out about the people who have come before us in our families, or if you're one of those people that has a full-on family record going back 10, 20 generations and whether that has helped you in forming the identity that you have. Comment below, let me know, let me know your thoughts on this topic and if you would like for me to discuss something that is on your mind in next month's videos, leave it as an Ask Amina question in the comment section under this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Remember to subscribe to my channel, subscribe button is down there. I upload new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, 12 noon on Saturdays and 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. For now, if you would like to watch another video from me, then feel free to click on this window right here. It will take you to another video of mine and in a couple of seconds I shall be disappearing out of this window and you will get the opportunity to click on another video option. Take your pick and I shall be catching you very soon in my next video. Take care. Doodle.